This is Scott Vanderplu, and you're listening to the Artist Edition Index Podcast, Episode 32. Thank you for joining me once more for all things AE, taking the written word from AEindex.org and bringing it to voice in this monthly podcast, where the last day of the month I look at everything that happened uh, in the past 30, 31, 28 days, whatever that month may be. I would also like to welcome new listeners from YouTube. Uh, As of last episode, Episode 31, June 2019, I added um, this podcast to YouTube. And I uh, uh, will be bringing some videos as well. So I'll get into that in a little bit. I wanted to first say, this is Scott Vanderplu again. Everything we're talking about is from the Artist Edition Index, which is at aeindex.org. I'm available for any questions, concerns, comments at scott at aeindex.org. We're on Facebook at Facebook slash Artist Edition Index or Twitter at A Index. Um, yeah, that's the spiel. Um, let's get into this month. Focus of this month is um, San Diego Comic Con, which just passed. I thought we'd talk about two things. We have the um, Scott Dunbeer uh, panel, which had some announcements for uh, the Artist Edition uh Collectors, readers, and then we had the Eisner Awards. So let's talk about those. Uh, I guess let's do the Eisner Awards first. There were a couple projects that had winners related to the Artist Edition Index. And that was Best Archival Collection Project, Comic Books. The winner was Bill Sienkiewicz's Mutants and Moon Knights and Assassin's Artifact Edition, edited by Scott Dunbar. And then we had Best Publication Design. The winner was Will Eisner's Contract with God Curator's Collection, designed by John Lind. So, two big wins there for the AE format. Well done, gentlemen. Both excellent products. Um, I did vote. I have, uh, because of... um, I'm able to vote, anyways. Let me just put it that way. And uh, I did did my voting, and I did vote for uh, Contract with God. So I'm thankful for that win. I, uh, for best archival collection projects, I voted for uh, Eisner's Contract with God in that category too. But it's great to see uh, Mutants and Moonites and Assassins win for best archival collection project. All right, that's that. Uh, San Diego Comic Con 2019. There was a panel called IDW Publishing Artist Editions and More. So Scott Dunbar talked about a bunch of things. And uh, there were some announcements that are not AE related. You can read about those in other places. I have some links on the site to a Bleeding Cool article and a ComicCon.com article. What relates to uh, the AE format is uh, one new announcement was made. For, that's going to be the EC Comics Covers Artist Edition. Um, approximately 50% of the material will be new that we haven't seen before. And 50% will be material that has appeared in other artist editions. So lots of covers available. So it's not surprising. From the, we've seen quite a few uh, EC archives, so it's not. Su- I'm sorry, archives EC artist edition, so it's not surprising that we'd see that material reprinted again. And um, I mean, a few of us buy every artist edition, so you may have one or two of these, but uh, there'll be something new for you here. So that's nice to see. I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to get it. I like the. Uh, I like the covers volumes. They're not my favorite. I like the stories volumes better. I like artist editions with stories. And they, in fact, the EC ones are some of my favorites. The spirit are my, spirits are my absolute favorites. And I, I think it's pretty clear we're never going to see another spirit artist edition from IDW. I keep hoping that we'll see that from Kitchen Sink Books. But that's that. Um, the Bernie Wrightson's Frankenstein artist edition has been pushed to 2020. John Byrne's Marvel Classics Artifact Edition will include six pages of unpublished Captain America work. Apparently, Byrne had some pages and things up to issue 257, but I think he stopped 255, so we'll see some of that. And the Dave Cockrum's X-Men Artifact Edition was mentioned as an upcoming book, but there was no date given that was announced at WonderCon early in the year. 
So that's the news that came out of San Diego Comic Con. Um, I look for other news. I'd love to see some graffiti designs news or some dynamite news or some kitchen sink book news. But there just well, wasn't any. The Fantagraphics had their announcements earlier in the year. And that's it. I mean, it's Wonder Com and San Diego Comic Con seem to be announcements and they only seem to be IDW. So I, I'd like to see that trend change. But unless somebody in one of these publishers decides to do some announcing, that's not going to happen. We did see some announcements several years ago from Dynamite when they announced uh, that Marvel's book and the Best of Vampirella and the Walter Simonson Bowser Galactica. So Bowser Galactica came out last year. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Van Prala books, three years late now, two years late, three years. And uh, the Marvel books never been mentioned again. So we'll see what happens there. That's uh, disappointing as well. Maybe that's why they're not announcing. We'll see. All right. That was San Diego Comic Con. Moving on to our monthly poll on the website. It is the last day of the poll. The poll runs from the 15th to the end of the month. Uh, I don't know what happened to me, but I didn't get the poll up until the 16th of the month this time. So we lost a day in the polling. So I'm sorry to say about that. Right now, where it stands, um, here's the question that was given. Legend was a comic book imprint at Dark Horse Comics created in 1994 by Frank Miller and John Byrne as an avenue for creator-owned projects. It has spawned some of the most amazing comics of the decade, but which of them gets your vote? Which of these Dark Horse Legends artists deserves the AE treatment? Concrete, Think Like a Mountain by Paul Chadwick. Madman, The Exit of Dr. Boyford by Mike Allred. Martha Washington Goes to War by Dave Gibbons. Monkey Man and O'Brien by Aaron Adams. The Big Guy and Rusty the Robot and Rusty the Boy Robot by Jeff Darrow. So Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot gets the, so far is leading dramatically, followed by Monkey Man and O'Brien then Martha Washington, then Concrete, then Madman. I wonder if Madman's trailing so much because they had that Artist Select edition. I don't know. We haven't seen uh, a lot of original art from Mike Allred producing anything. I'd love the Martha Washington Goes to War. Uh, or the, Actually, I'd love any of these. I voted for Monkey Man and O'Brien. Anyway, polls are closing tonight, so if you hadn't voted, please pop on and take a look it's uh it's i always pin it to the top so when you come to the website it's the first post all the time so go on and have a look there all right moving on to our normal rotation of announcements next thing we topic next topic we cover on the podcast are shipping changes so if you go to the aindex.org uh, and click on the Ars Edition uh, Index banner or the index at the top of the menu there, that takes you to the uh, Artist Edition Index proper or as the full name is Artist Edition Gallery Edition Original Art Archives Index. And that lists what's upcoming. We had some changes this month. We saw Walter Simonson's Star Wars Artist Edition go from the end of July to the 1st uh, second Wednesday of August which uh, is, uh, sorry, no, it was the first Wednesday of August uh, which is August 7th and that's confirmed that will be shipping. I checked uh, with my local comic shop and it's it's on their invoice so it's coming in for next week. I mean it did premiere at San Diego, at San Diego Comic Con so it was for sale so that's nice to see. Uh, Spawn Vault Edition Volume 2 moved to August 28th David Mazzicelli's Daredevil Boarding and Artisan Edition moved to September 25th. And P. Craig Russell's The Selfish Giant and Other Stories Fine Art Edition, which is, is not been solicited through Diamond. That is a uh, Kickstarter solicitation. But um, Wayne Allen Herald, a uh, fan of the show, hey Wayne, has uh, made an announcement through the Indiegogo that uh, because um, he's had some uh, health issues and the book has been moved back, so expect to see that at the end of November. So, still looking forward to that. Uh, that September 25th date concerns me because there's a log jam occurring on September 25th. Right now, IDW has moved Daredevil Mas Dave Mastelli's Daredevil Morning Artist Edition, Don Rose's The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck Volume 2 Artist's Edition, James Cameron's The Abyss Artisan Edition, adapted by Michael W. Kaluta, and for those who are also getting it that sort of may fall under the category, 
Um, that Roy Crinkle book. Let me see if I can just get the name. What was that called? Roy G. Crinkle, Father of Heroic Fantasy, has also been moved to September 25th. That's a lot of books from IDW all piled up to September 25th. I got a feeling not everything's going to come out that day, and we're going to see some disappointment there come September. Well, it's two months away, so a month and three quarters, so let's hope that happens. And let's hope these other books stick to the shipping dates. So that's the changes for this month. Let's look at the solicitations for this month. Two AE format books were solicited this month. Very exciting. The first one we had heard already from IDW. Oh, I'm sorry, from IDW. First one be from Fantagraphics because they go alphabetical. And um, that is Ed Piscor Fantagraphics Studio Edition. So, new cover than what was previously. Um, Provided by Fantagraphics. Let me give you the blurb. From Public Enemy to Professor X, this collection of scans of raw, unretouched original art gives insight into the creative and drawing processes of the best-selling, award-winning hip-hop family tree X-Men graphic novelist. This career overview of one of comics' greatest creators collects raw, unretouched original pages from the best-selling series Hip-Hop Family Tree and X-Men Grand Design and includes commercial art, designs for a line of Public Enemy action figures, and much more. It features over 100 page, 150 pages of exact facsimiles of the artwork sitting on Pisker's drawing table at the exact size created, scanned in full color to showcase every detail in the artist's process, from blue pencil to whiteout to swaths of deep inky blacks. Each piece is annotated by Pisker personally. It's like sitting in the author's studio, a must-have book for students, educators, and collectors. That is scheduled to ship October 30th, 2019. It's 17 by 22 inches, I believe I've seen four different sizes for this book now. That's the latest one. I'm going to that. It listed as 140 pages, so I'm not sure how it features over 150 pages exact facsimiles when it's showing as 140 pages. Again, we'll have to see. 150 US. I'm excited about um, each piece is annotated by Pisker personally. I think that's going to be awesome to see a note about every piece of artwork. Uh, we saw that in a review of this month, um, which I will talk about at the end because I do reviews last, but that's interesting detail. All right. Second AE format book to be solicited f- for an October release is Star Wars Artisan Edition. In 1977, the same year the film was released, Marvel Comics launched Star Wars as a comic book adapted by Roy Thomas and Howard Chaikin. The comic series ignited the imaginations of countless readers across the globe, becoming part of the phenomenon that was spawned by George Lucas's smash hit and record-breaking film. Star Wars Artisan Edition is an art book collecting more than 100 pages from the earliest stories, many from the first 10 issues, and each page has been painstakingly scanned from the original art. While appearing to be in black and white, the pages are printed in color, allowing the reader a rare glimpse of what original art looks like, complete with blue pencil notations, corrections, white out, all the little nuances that make a page of original art unique. Besides Howard Chaikin, pages by comic legends Walter Simonson and Michael Golden are also included in this volume. As an added bonus, there is a beautiful fold out of Howard Chaikin's gorgeous Star Wars painting that was used to announce the film at the 1976 San Diego Comic Convention. October 16th, 2019 is the uh, scheduled ship date. It's 8 inches by 12 inches, 160 pages. Hardcover. Or is it a hardcover? Interesting. Hmm. Let's have a quick peek at the solicitation on Amazon. See what this is. It's $49.99 US. All right, we're having a look-see. Uh, da, da, da. IDW says, I'm sorry, Amazon says, doesn't tell me. Oh, it's a paperback. All right, so it is a paperback like the other. Our artisan editions are a bit of a confusion only because, so um, if it's a, if they're taking an existing AE format book and shrinking it down and releasing it, they seem to do a soft cover. If they're taking original material and putting it in the artist's edition format, it seems to be a hardcover. So that seems to be how they do it. Such as Jack Kirby Pencils and Inks or the uh, Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, yeah. Um, if you go to the... Uh, when I do solicitations, I like to include the page from the previews catalog. Now, if you go to my solicitations page for this month, uh, wittingly uh, titled October 2019 Solicitations because I'm so creative... You'll see that there's the page from the previous catalog for the Star Wars Artist Edition, but there's nothing for Ed Piscard Fantagraphics Studio Edition. And that is because 
the little snippet in previews for the Pisker book from Fantasy Graphics has no previews, no additional information. Uh, IDW normally gives a full page to their solicits for these AE format books, and that page is the only time you see the art, some of the artwork that will appear in the book, which is just incredibly aggravating and frustrating because they seem to do a poor job of promoting the book outside of this page in the catalog. Now, if you're interested in the Artist Edition, you can just take a look at my um, Artifact Edition review, and I've got 20-something pages, images of the book, with so that's over 40 pages of the book uh, in photographs on my site. So just pop on anx.org, have a look, and you'll get the get full idea of what's happening. All right, those are the solicits. Very exciting. Um, I'm, all, I'm messing around with the banners. I'm messing around with the site a bit. I changed the banners now. It's a, it's a word balloon with a index in it and then the words. And I changed the graphics a little bit because uh, because of the large size. Um, that some images can appear on my site. I wanted the images to look a little better. Uh, surprisingly, um, not really, I don't think it is surprisingly, but uh, the number of visitors visiting the site uh, from a mobile device, so i.e. a phone or a tablet, is increasing steadily month by month. I think um, desktop is still my largest percentage. I think it's about 50-something, but it's 30-something percent from a uh, mobile browser. So that's I'm trying to get more mobile-friendly. And one of the ways to do that is uh, to make sure every image I have is crisp and good-looking. So, All right. This seems like a good time before I move on to sales and reviews to give you my monthly plug. Uh, three things really one if you're not signed up for the newsletter please do so it comes out every Saturday at 3 o'clock it just includes what came out that week on the a in, on the a index so if you're not a follower of the site you're not in the RSS feed I release one email a week comes out on Saturday lists what happened if nothing was posted that week on the a index no email goes out it's that simple Sign up, you get it right away. That's the way to go. You know, the my site's highest hits are between 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. So people get the newsletter and they click. I love it. Why not? It's uh, This is not a fast-moving topic where, you know, I've got 10 posts a day and you're missing out on things. You know, I'm, one post a day is something miraculous is occurring. You'll see two posts. And it's very rare for me to have you know, four posts in a week. So get the newsletter. Secondly, please support the site one of two ways. One, become a patron through Patreon. There's a monthly subscription, you can call it if you want. Starts at a dollar a month. You can go up to them as much as you'd like. I have some people that go five or ten, and I have a very generous supporter who goes more than that. And those are all wonderful. Every dollar counts. I'm using it to keep the site running and to buy the books. As I've said, you know, every time it's a one man band, chief cook, bottle washer, that's me. And, uh, I am, uh, I'm buying the books myself. I'm open and willing to receive any of these, uh, books for free from the publisher. If they want to send me a review copy, I have an address in the Canada and the U S for anyone listening. And uh, I'll gladly take them. But for now, I'm buying them myself. So you can support me through Patreon, which is wonderful, and I greatly appreciate it. Or as well, I have a, now I have a PayPal, uh, PayPal Me button. So you can, if you just like to make a small gift or donation one time, you can go through PayPal. So either way is awesome. Um, if you're a Patreon supporter, as an example, um, I just hit the $50 mark. And at that point, I said I would start doing videos on the site. I think I've talked about videos before, but now that I've got, I've hit the mark, I've got to produce now. So I've got to stand for my camera. I've decided um, I'm going to use my phone as always. Um, got an iPhone. I normally I upgrade every two years. And I'm going to do, I'm uh, going to do a video. I'm going to have my theme music, uh, St. James Infirmary by um, Louis Armstrong and Cab Calloway. That's my theme music for this podcast, in case you were wondering what it is. And uh, that, I don't know what that plays for. Three, four minutes, maybe four, four or something. So I'm going to flip through a book. I'm going to have the music playing. I'm going to turn the pages to and to fill up those that time. So, And that's going to be, I mean, that's how I'm going to start the videos. I'm going to uh, 
I'll try. I'm going to do the, my newest few books, and then I'm going to do the my most popular books. And these videos will appear in the posts. And I'm going to start by making them Patreon exclusives. So if you're a Patreon supporter, you will have access to the video. And if you're not a Patreon supporter, uh, they'll be delayed in the videos. But eventually, I'll open them up, like I've done with the uh, Scott Dunbeer Q and As. Uh, there's three on the site so far. The first two. Uh, all three were patron exclusives. The first two I've opened up now to everybody because the time has passed. The third I will open up at some point. But that is it. That's the, uh, that, there's the advertisement for the site. So thank you for all the support it. And thanks for everybody who comes to the site and reads my reviews as well. The last way to be a supporter, if you like one of the books and you can click on a link to buy the book through Amazon or Things from the World or A Books or eBay, the links I have on the site all get me something. So I greatly appreciate that. And so everything helps. And I'm really, really thankful for the support I get from the site. And I wanted to say thank you once more to everybody who comes to the Artist Edition Index and everybody who supports. All right. Enough of that. Let's move on to monthly sales. We finally had a monthly sales because a book was released in June. It's been since January. We had a new Artist Edition. Unfortunately, the top 500 uh, graphic novels came out. And... Um, Berkeley Breathes, Bloom County Artist Edition, did not make the list. It had to, so 210 was the item number 500. So that means initial sales for this book were less than 210. Oh, well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Moving on to Artist Edition out of print sales. Uh, things picked up a little bit this month. I, I, like I said, we had a bit of a dearth of, uh, of sales on eBay lately, but it's, it's come back up. And I should mention that uh, a lot of books that were back ordered on Diamond have now become available again through Diamond, and I noticed through Amazon. Um, books like the Titan books, uh, The Prisoner, The Book of Ballads, and then a bunch of, uh, not a bunch, but like uh, Bernie Wrightson's um, Artifact Edition, right? The second print that's available again. So it's nice to see some of those books that have been back ordered uh, available once more. But let's talk what's sold. Three copies of Alien, the Illustrated Story, the original art edition, sold for an average of ninety-one ninety-six. Two copies of Bernie Wright's and Artifact Edition first print, sold for an average of one eleven forty. Excuse me, one eleven forty-eight. Two copies of Best of EC Comics Volume One Artist Edition, sold for an average of one thirteen seventy-five. One copy of Bill Sienkiewicz's Mutants and Moon Knights and Assassins Artifact Edition, sold for one twenty-seven fifty. One copy of Dave Givens' Washington Artifact Edition sold for $90. One copy of Dave Stevens' Rock to Artist Edition first print sold for $103.50. And two copies of the second print sold for an average of $95. Four copies of David Mazzuchelli's Dead of a Morning Artist Edition sold, an averaging $174.37. Always the best bet. We will see if those numbers drop, and we'll see if the prices drop once this Artisan Edition comes out. That'll be interesting. ElfQuest Gallery Edition, two copies sold, average $67. We haven't seen movement on that in a while. One copy of Frank Cho's Savage Wolverine Artist Edition, $99. Two copies of Frank Miller's Daredevil Artifact Edition, averaging $99.50. One copy of Frank Miller's Sin City, The Hard Goodbye Curator's Collection, $100. One copy of Gene Colan's Tomb of Dracula Artist Edition, $121.91. One copy of Gil Kane's Amazing Spider-Man Artist Edition, $66.75. Deal a rama right there. One copy of Jack Davis's EC Stories Artist Edition, $89. Two copies of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four Artist Edition for $87.50 average. Two copies of Jim Lee DC Legends Artifact Edition, averaging $109.74. Two copies of Jim Starlin's Marvel Cosmic Artifact Edition, averaging $92.62. There's another book that was back ordered, but it's now in, uh, available again. One copy of Joe Kubert's Tarzan of the Apes Artist Edition, sold for $70. One copy of John Buscema's Silver Surfer Artist Edition sold for 70 as well. One copy of John Byrne's Fantastic Four Artist Edition sold for 61. One copy of Lone Wolf and Cub Gallery Edition sold for 73.38. One copy of Mike Mignola's Hellboy in Hell and Other Stories Artist Edition for 71.05. Three copies of Sergio Aragona's Grew the Wander Artist Edition sold for an average of 54. Wow. Two copies of Spawn Vault Edition sold for an average of three thirty seven. This is shocking, surprising. That is almost double cover price. What is going on? Two copies of Star Wars Dark Times Gower Edition, thirty two forty nine. One copy of Stranko Nick Fury Agent of Shield Artist Edition, eighty seven seventy eight. One copy of Isagi Jimbo Samurai and Other Stories Gower Edition, ninety three seventy four. 
One copy of Walter Simonson's Thor Artist Edition sold for 83 and one copy of the second edition sold for 125 I don't get that one. Two copies of Will Eisner's The Spirit Artist Edition sold for an average of $92.50. Ah, oh, that was... Those spirit books, unbelievable. All right, moving along. Let's have a look. We're moving for time. We're doing pretty good for time. One review this month, and it's uh, pulling it out of the vault. It's um, Hellboy Into the Silent Sea Studio Edition from Flask. Let me give you the blurb. Mike Mignola's Hellboy Into the Silent Sea Studio Edition is a gorgeous, oversized deluxe treatment showcasing Gianni's original artwork in an exquisite hardcover book. The 144-page collection includes revealing commentary regarding how two legendary comic book creators seamlessly developed the Hellboy Sea Saga from the core of an idea into a finished work of art. The combined talents of Mignola and Gianni are on display as the reader follows along the path of the creative process. The script, preliminary roughs, reference photos, completed pencil drawings, and finished inks are all shared and discussed. The pencil drawings, many of which have never been seen before by the public, provide insight not only for the student, but also for any fan who enjoys lavishly reproduced comic art. It came out in June 2018. It's 10 by 13 inches, 144 pages, $50 US. Um, this was a Kickstarter. There was a signed edition, and then there was this regular edition. Then it was released through Diamond with limited numbers, and it was available from the Flusk website. It's long gone from Diamond. It's sold out on the Flusk website. The only way to get this now is on eBay. I've got the eBay link on the site. Just, I just want to put that up front. This book is so interesting in the layout. This I'm, I've never experienced paper as thick as this paper. It's 144 pages. This book is thick, and that paper is so sturdy. It's just unbelievable. So binding, gorgeous book, fabulous production values. Uh, really interesting. They so they present uh, Hellboy into the Silent Sea and the Monster Men. So I, 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 interesting that Monster Men's not mentioned in the blurb or on the cover, but it's there, and it's a uh, it's a real great addition to this book. I love it. So, so interesting. So you get, uh, you get the, the first, you open the book, you, you get the first two pages, uh, gives you a thumbnail breakdown, gives you pencils, uh, an enlargement of a panel, and Gianni's notes, and lots of times his reference. Then you turn the page, and you get those two pages inked. Right? Then you turn the page again, and then you get the two pages, you get the, you get the rust, the pencils, notes, um, reference material, and a of panel, turn the page again, boom, boom, that's how it works. Two pages, two pages, two pages. That's how Inner Boy, the Silent Sea works. And then when you get to Monster Ben, they change it up and they go, you know, left side pencils and notes, right side inks. And I've got to say, I prefer that format. Uh, it doesn't give as much room for things. Maybe, you know, we don't get the panel enlargement. We don't get the reference. But I like the notes. I like seeing the pencil. And I like to immediately look over and see the inks. I think that's definitely the way to go. And especially for Hellboy, you know, it would have been great to see in Hellboy Into the Silent Sea because there's no text on the art. So if you want to read this, like I like to read these pages of original art like a comic, then boom, works beautiful for Monster Men doesn't really work for Hellboy into the Silent Sea. But this format is awesome. I mean, I, I've talked to John Flesk uh, on Facebook and in person, and he's not interested in doing an artist edition format size. He doesn't want to do the original art at full size. He likes to keep it a little bit smaller. So we've seen the we've seen two different formats, though. We've seen the Nexus book, which was a slick paper, thinner paper. And now we've seen this studio edition, Into the Silent Sea, Paper's awesome. Uh, matte paper stock. The reproduction is awesome. The artwork is gorgeous. Uh, I like this format. I, I think sticking with the Monster Man format of pencils, notes, and then uh, inks on the other side is the way to go. And I so, so hope Flesks will continue to do this with other work. Please. Please keep doing it. And uh, Flesks, you know, they like to do things. They like to do it on um, Kickstarter and then move on. Um... It's funny, I had taken a break sort of from Kickstarter when this book was done, and I missed out because there was an illustrated uh, um, Cthulhu book with this as a Kickstarter bonus, so I really feel like I missed out on that. And the, the signed edition was slipcased, which would have been nice too, but this is gorgeous, and Flesk always offers the books through Diamond as well, so uh, it's awesome. So please jump on that. It's so gorgeous. Um, that's it for this month. 
uh, next month, you know, we should have another, we should have three more artist edition AE format books next month. I'm really hoping that we do, um, because shipping will be so late at the end of the month. I'll have one reviewed for sure. The Star Wars one, Walter Simonson, Star Wars artifact edition with uh, Tom Palmer. But I don't know about uh, the other ones. So wait and see. Thank you for joining me here again. I'm, uh, everything we talked about. You can see pictures of and uh, see it in text at aeindex.org. You can email me at scott at aeindex.org. I like to answer questions for sure. And if you give send me a question, it will appear on this uh, podcast. And uh, that's it. Please come and visit us and support us uh, however you can. Thank you. And we will talk again next month. <laughs>